Viewers, uh, I have a very exciting guest uh, today. Uh, Alex Wyatt is the global project manager at simplybat.com. She is on a mission to demystify taxes for, for the e-commerce community. She is working in VAT for the last five years. That, that's so long just on taxes. Uh, she has helped uh, business navigate through uh, Brexit, uh, the EU VAT reform, and um, also taking the first leap into cross-border trade, which VAT is very much uh, a key thing in terms of selling cross-borders. Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, joining us, Alex. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk about tax with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, like the, the old saying goes, right? There's only two uh, sure things in life, taxes and debt, right? I know, we got to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we have to, we have to. And uh, no, if uh, the viewers do, don't know that um, Alex and I are can is from Canada. So I, I found it very interesting that uh, it's like two non-Europeans talking about VATs, right? It's kind of like a subject that uh, you don't expect two Canadians to talk about. I know, how did we get here? Yeah, I know. Normally, <laughs> I question like, it every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And normally like, you know, this type of like subject, you could probably get somebody with a British accent, like talking on the other side talking about VATs. It's okay. You're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's good. I mean, I think um, for like non-Europeans, like VAT is like total unknown, right? Unless like you travel there or live there for a bit, they don't know what exactly VAT is. So I think uh, it's perfect that we are talking about it because we could talk about in a sense of like people that does, doesn't know anything about it. So we could like ask all the stupid questions. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And I think definitely coming from Canada, you know, going into the United States and shopping in the US, you know, it's, it's, um, different types of taxes and and or similar taxes, but it's treated differently in different processes. So that's why it's quite good to um, yeah to have it from a different lens, one that can relate to you and your um, journey cross border. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like some of the taxes, they kind of mean the same thing, but they just like call differently. You know, in the states, it's called state tax, and in Canada, it's called uh, PST, provincial tax. So. Um, a lot of times, same thing, like maybe even VAT, same thing, uh, but it's just named differently. So I guess like, you know, let's just start off with like, especially like I answer a qu this question from answer in a perspective of non-Europeans, what is VAT? And uh, for Americans or Canadians, what is it like the equivalent of yeah, so um, what is VAT? So like you kind of just alluded to, it is really similar to sales tax um, in the States, GST, PST, HST in Canada. Um, it's all very similar, um, but it's VAT. So it stands for value added tax. And essentially the what's unique about VAT is that every time value is added along the supply chain, there should be tax charged on that. Um, now, if you're a VAT registered business, it's not meant to be a burden on your business. Um, as long as you're VAT registered, you can also always reclaim or offset VAT on your VAT returns um, once you're VAT registered. So um, it's not supposed to be a burden for you. The ultimate burden of VAT is supposed to be on the end customer. Um, so you have to kind of think about VAT um, as a, you are kind of collecting the, the taxes on behalf of the government. I get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Americans coming over, starting to, to come into Europe and then they go, oh, wow, you guys are charging 20% taxes. You're right. It, it start, it's around 20%. And in, across the EU, it ranges from 17% all the way up to 27% VAT. Um, so you really have to consider these going into your, your product prices. But you have to think, you know what, this isn't, this isn't part of your product price. This is you collecting it on behalf of the government. Um, and, and this shouldn't eat into your margins in any sense. You don't need to take 20% out of your margins. It's something that you need to account on top of your product price. Another kind of unique thing and where it differs um, to maybe, you know, shopping in Canada or the US is, um, um, you know, when you're shopping online in, in North America, you have taxes added at checkout. Um, the difference over in the UK and Europe is VAT is added um, in the sale price. So whatever price oh. that's listed online, that's what you're paying at checkout. There's no extra taxes added. And I think that's kind of how they get around, you know, these crazy tax rates of 20% up to yeah. say 27%, they, they include the prices, the, the, the VAT in the price. So you don't actually realize that you're paying 20% taxes. Yeah, you yeah. just kind of, you know, it's already there and it's already included. So I think it's a sneaky way to get around it, um, but super important. Um, if you're coming into the market, you need to consider that and add those. Yeah, I, I think that is like one of the key confusion, right? Um, you know, in North America, you get like a separate line item for the taxes. When you pay for something, you know, like how much you're paying taxes, right? It's broken down in receipt. 
right? And I don't think that is broken down in, in Europe. You pay for something, right? It's just that one full price. Am I correct? You, you can still get your invoices and on the invoices, you would still separate out the taxes. But when you're listing a price, say on Amazon, um, and you would list say $19.99 for your item, right. that would be the price that goes to checkout and what you would pay at checkout. So when you're calculating that $19.99, you are including the 20% tax in that $19.99. And then you're kind of working down. And then obviously Amazon's okay. cut that they take, and then kind of working back and then whatever's left over, it would be your your profit margin off the back of that. So I guess like a key thing for um, Amazon sellers or any retail for that matter, you have to take into consideration when you list the price, you have to really take into consideration like the VAT. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That and is this is like one. the same for, um, so with the Brexit and also like, you know, the segregation of EU and uh, UK, like the UAT, like this UAT system is basically the same for UK and also the EU as well. Yeah, so they're very similar system. Well, they are the same system. The UK was um, part of the EU um, until not too long ago. And, you know, we were part of the EU VAT rules um, up until then. So once the UK left the EU in terms of Brexit, um, what essentially happened is UK still has taxes, they still have VAT. Um, it just means that the, the mainland UK is not part of um, the trading rules. Um, so you can't sell uh, cross border as easily between the UK and Europe as you once could before. Um, so there's still taxes that you still need to get registered for or account for. Um, but now if you are trading, say you're holding your stock in the UK and you want to send to a customer in the EU, you have a few more barriers to get through. Um, everything is now seen as an export from the UK and an import into the EU. So it's much like if you were selling your goods from the United States um, and how you export your goods from the US and you'd import um, the goods into the EU. Mm -hmm. so similar thing now with the UK. So you need to make sure you have your documents in place, you have your commercial invoices, um, you have figured out which um, INCO term that you're using on your import documents. So those are pretty much deciding who's going to pay the import taxes, all of those things you need to make sure that you're thinking about when you um, are now selling cross border between the UK and the mm. EU. Or separately, you can think about maybe splitting up your supply chain um, and holding your stock in the UK to service your UK customers and then holding your stock in the EU to service your EU customers um, to kind of help break down those barriers. Uh, so more them. or less, it's effectively like different countries. It's not like one trading unit. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's become a lot more complex and, and a lot of sellers have really suffered because of Brexit, because of, you know, people would start in the UK, especially American sellers would come over to the UK and start in the UK because it's English speaking really easy. And then you could use that as a launch point using EFN, for example, um, to then to sell your, uh, your goods cross border. Now it's a bit more complex. Um, you can still come into the UK and I highly advise that as a good starting place. Yeah. Um, but the, just logistically, it's it's slightly more difficult to get your goods now into the EU, to the EU okay. customers. So in terms specifically with uh, VAT and Amazon selling, right? Um, so I've heard that it's, you know, now it's much more important for you to like register first for VAT before you actually sell anything on Amazon. So um, why do you think it's like really important, uh, you know, to register your VAT? if you are selling in EU and UK. And the second part of that question is, if you want to sell on both of these marketplaces, do you need to have a separate VAT for UK and also a separate one for um, EU marketplace when you want to sell to both? Good. These are really good questions. Um, so yeah, so first off, Amazon um, and marketplaces are requiring sellers to get VAT registered um, in order to start selling on those marketplaces. And, and especially if you're holding inventory um, in an FBA center or in a 3PL, um, that triggers a VAT obligation um, as soon as you start selling goods from that, that 3PL or over the Amazon FBA center. So you need to make sure that you are getting VAT registered in the country where your um, goods are located and being sent from. Uh, be ideally, before you start selling, um, Amazon may have a blocker um, and may block right. you from actually selling before you even, uh, you know, upload your VAT registration. So you might need that VAT registration. And so by, basically, that UK, could be a requirement. The VAT is a requirement for your actual account to be approved. I know in some cases it is, especially if you are using FBA 100%. Yeah. Um, now, if you're sending goods maybe through the global, like a global shipping program, maybe from the US might be slightly different, but um, definitely if you're using FBA, then yes, Amazon is likely to to really require the, the VAT before even starting to sell. 
Okay. So in terms of planning ahead, uh, you know, if I want to register for a VAT for EU, EU and UK, um, of course, in EU, depending on what country, what's the approximate time period it takes for you to register for a VAT? So it really depends on the country. Um, it can take anywhere between about, we say about three weeks up to 12 weeks in some countries. Some countries like France, for example, can take a lot longer to get the VAT registration. So we're looking at the 12 week time. Um, other countries like Italy could come in a bit quicker at the three week mark. So it really depends on um, on the country that you're looking to, to register in. And that kind of alludes to your other question that you ask is, you know, is it just a UK registration and an EU registration or how do those registrations work? And, and the registrations are by country. So the EU, it's not a single registration in the EU. You need um, an individual VAT registration in the country where you're you're holding um, your inventory in the EU and the UK. So you could end up having multiple VAT registrations depending on where your goods are being sent from. So let's just say I'm an uh, Amazon seller. So obviously as an Amazon seller, your resources are limited. There's no way you could like register VAT for every single European country. So let's just say I want to sell in EU and UK. If I register a VAT in UK, and if I want to register, if I want to ship my inventory to sell in EU to say Germany, right? And want to send my inventory to FBA Germany, I just need to register for VAT Germany and UK. That's it, right? Yeah, correct. So this would all be enabled under your FBA settings in Amazon. You can choose which sort of countries you want to um, you want to list your, or store your products in. Um, now, Amazon, I know, is pushing people pan EU, pan EU, pan EU, yeah, yeah, which yeah. essentially means that you have your 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 uh, goods stored uh, so stored in about six different EU countries. Yeah. They've also added Netherlands and, and uh, Sweden as well. So you could have up to eight different um, right. EU countries and the UK. And I don't think, you know, for a small seller who's testing the market, that's the best idea um, before, you know, you start you start coming into the U um, EU. You want to test your products. You want to test the market and see what works and what doesn't work each country might not be the best and that's a huge amount of investment of time and energy and money to get that registered if if your products aren't going to do well in those countries so what i would suggest is maybe like you mentioned starting in specific countries we know the uk is a massive market we know germany is a massive market and so is france so maybe starting out in those countries um getting a singular VAT registration. And once your goods are in the EU, you can actually sell cross-border um, mm -hmm. no problem. So with holding your stock in one EU country, you can sell to customers in every single EU country and limit your VAT liability. So you only just need to have one VAT registration. So that is a really um, you know, interesting way to get into the EU as a, you know, a seller that's looking to test the market or enter in and, and see where your products are selling best um, and then grow from there. Yeah, I think that's a very uh, key. T uh, that's a key tip because I think like, you know, when, you know, people see the VAT in different countries, like, do I need to do it for every single country to sell? So the answer is no. So if you have one VAT within EU, uh, then you could just use that uh, to basically cross refer to different uh, countries uh, within EU. So that's probably like the path least of resistance if you want to sell within the different marketplaces in the EU. Yeah, and another interesting thing, because I don't want to lose track of um, the EU VAT reform that just happened. And essentially what happened, so this was July 2021, where uh, the EU essentially changed all the VAT rules for us, um, really made, uh, with a focus on e-commerce and marketplaces. And it essentially made marketplaces liable to collect the VAT and remit it to the tax authorities on behalf of non-EU sellers. Now, when I say this, it means that if you're still holding inventory in an EU member state, you still need that local VAT registration. And then what happens is once a good is sold on the marketplace, so say you sell a pair of shoes on Amazon, um, Amazon is going to collect the VAT um, at the point of sale. So they won't give you that money back. They'll, they'll um, collect it and remit that over to the tax authorities. But what you need to do as a seller is declare that sale um, made on Amazon on your local VAT return. So you need to declare that on your local VAT return as an exemptive VAT sale made to the marketplace. Um, right. So you still have to record it. You still have to have that local VAT registration, um, but Amazon is going to collect and remit the taxes on your behalf if you're a non-EU seller. So that's a really interesting point. That means you only, you know, you can reclaim your import VAT on that local VAT return. Any B two B sales that happen on Amazon, because I know Amazon's done a big push for um, B, uh, for businesses, um, they all get recorded on your local v VAT return. 
but Amazon is liable to collect the VAT to okay. private individuals. So, and this is only for non EU. So, if Correct. you're a European citizen, right, you could just mm -hmm. collect the VAT yourself. Right, like Amazon will not, you know, collect for you. You get the payment, and you have to make the payment yourself to the Absolutely. government, whatever like your VAT is registered. But if you are non-European uh, citizen selling in uh, EU, Amazon will be liable in terms of collecting VAT in your behalf, right? And then they will remit it to the whatever VAT registration that you have exactly yeah okay. and you just need to make sure you record that transaction to the tax yeah. authorities um so that's your your response basically you would just say like tell the tax authority like amazon or we make this right yeah uh, you don't need to like um double charge me or yeah something like that. no yeah. exactly so it's it's really trying what they're trying to do is close this there's a, been a huge amount of vat fraud that has yeah. come about with e-commerce um you know with cross-border trade with international sellers coming in and finding loopholes in the vat legislation so what they're trying to do is capture the vat kind of at the point of sale and right. make sure that they get that vat um you know to make sure that they're not they're not losing um vat to VAT fraud or people kind of of sneaking through the hoops but the reason why um you know for eu sellers where they still are liable to collect the vat on their own behalf and remit that to the tax authorities it's the eu sellers are then in the yeah, eu yeah, exactly. they're, they're a bit easier to grab not grab yeah, yeah, physically yeah, but yeah you know, that, that makes a lot of sense right, yeah yeah and whereas yeah, yeah. yeah if you're an american seller how are they going to get to you you know out and on the beach in california i don't know so <laughs> um yeah it's a bit it's a double standard but um hopefully it is kind of it is closing the back gap um, on fraud yeah and then uh, i think you just mentioned um you know import vat and then um, obviously earlier we talked about like uh, vat on sales so can you elaborate on this difference yeah absolutely and i really like to stress the difference between um they're all called vat but there's import vat and sales vat so your sales vat is what you are like i said collecting on behalf of the government and remitting that to the tax authorities and your import vat is um essentially what gets your goods into the eu it's to allow you to import so it depends on which country you're importing into you're going to be paying the rate of va the local rate of vat in that country but if you're vat registered in that country you can reclaim the import vat on your local vat return and this is why i stress the importance of wherever you're holding your inventory um say it's in germany you'd want to make sure that you're getting VAT registered in Germany and you can reclaim the import taxes. So when people say, oh, I'm going to be paying taxes twice or, uh, you know, on the imports and then the sales, it's not true because for the import VAT, you're always allowed to reclaim it. So you either pay it and then reclaim it on your VAT return. Right. Or there is another scheme in specific countries called postponed accounting which essentially means that you don't pay any import VAT at all and you just offset it on your VAT return. So you're pretty much saying, I was going to pay it, but I'm also going to reclaim it. So it's essentially canceling itself out. Okay. Um, only specific countries have it. You have to apply for it. Um, but if you're speaking to a, your VAT agent or a uh, freight forwarder and you want to use postponed accounting, definitely speak to them um, to see if it's available in that country because it can help for cash flow. You know, you wouldn't yeah, have right. to wait a yeah. month or three months to reclaim VAT um, on your VAT return. You would just be able to say, I've offset it on my VAT return and you don't have any cash flow implications on it. Is this a, a service that Simply VAT provides? Well, it's just dependent. Like we can definitely account for it on your local VAT return if um, that specific country has the postponed accounting. So it really depends on the on the country. If you're importing into the UK, for example, absolutely. Um, you just need to work it out with your freight forwarder that you are using the postponed accounting and then um, we would offset that on your local VAT return. Same thing in France. They would have postponed accounting. We can offset it. Um, it's not a paid for service it's just something that that happens um you just need to work it out with your freight forwarder that you are going to use the postponed accounting um and if you have to apply for it then you make sure that you have to you apply for it in the specific country so um what you just elaborated so let me give an example so let's just say my uh import vat is like 100 bucks right just a simple example and then eventually at the end of the year my uh, i have to remit uh, let's just say a thousand dollars in sales back so that means that i could deduct that 100 dollars to offset that uh one thousand dollars i owe so i the net amount of that that i owe to the government would be 900 dollars. exactly be like a simple very simplistic uh example of that yeah, absolutely. So that's exactly how it works so in, in its simplest form. Um, and and yeah, then all you would have to. So when I say reclaim, you don't necessarily get an exact cash 
back or check right, back right, yeah. to you. It's but you're right. Mess. It's it's all yeah. It's less of what you you owe to the tax authorities. Now, if um for example, you sell all of your non EU seller, you sell all your goods on Amazon, and now Amazon is responsible for all the collection of VAT, and you just have to reclaim VAT. Now you could get credit depending on the tax authorities. You could get credits on your account. You could get money sent back um, via check form, via direct debit. It depends on the tax authority, but it is um it is feasible to get money back into your account. Um, even if there is nothing that you owe necessarily. Um, so if you if you've paid too much or paid to import and now you're reclaiming it, then you can still get that back in credit or cash or check or direct debit, for example. I think that's uh, pretty clear in terms of uh, what you need to do to kind of offset your uh, import VAT tax. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people, especially again, uh, you know, speaking as a non, you know, North, uh, non-European um, you know, people in Asia, people in North America. So we keep hearing Brexit, right? So Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. But um, in more, more tangible terms, how has Brexit affect, um, you know, the relationship of VAT uh, for Amazon sellers? Like how, like tangibly been affected? Like are they paying more tax, paying less, less tax, or is it just a matter of more like paperwork? I think it's more a matter of more paperwork than yeah. anything, more red tape than anything, more complexity. Um, and, and that's just simply because of the goods not being as easily transferred between the UK and the, the EU um, any longer. But there, there have been a few other things that have um, changed since Brexit officially happened, which was last year. Um, so first off, um, especially with the Pan-EU program, before you could have imported your goods into the UK and Amazon would have shuffled your stock um, across all the different um, in, uh, fulfillment centers. Mm -hmm. And now um, they're no longer moving stock between all of the different um, EU or well, between the UK and the EU. Um, obviously that would pose a huge kind of liability on them. They need to handle all the paperwork and so on. So um, just keep that in mind. You might have to have two separate um, supply chains to go one into the UK to serve your UK customers and one going into the EU, at which point you can get into the pan-EU um, fulfillment from there. Um, the second thing that kind of happened um, from, from the VAT point of view is that much like in the EU with the EU VAT reform, um, the UK, as soon as Brexit happened, they made Amazon uh, liable to collect the VAT on the seller's behalf. Um, again, the sellers, if they're holding inventory in the UK, you still need the UK VAT registration. Again, B2B transactions not included, um, and you have to make um, zero rated sales to uh, the marketplace. Um, just like I mentioned earlier about your um, sales to marketplace, you still have to do that on the local uh, UK return. So right. the marketplaces are still uh, now liable to collect the VAT. So that's a big change for sellers. Um, in some cases, it's easier. In some cases, it's not. Um, wow. And then also um, importing into the UK as well. So say you're in the United States and you wanted to send goods into a customer, maybe a customer orders from your shop. Um, Amazon will actually take on the VAT liability of your business for up to 135 pounds. So up until that point, Amazon is going to... Um, to collect the VAT on your behalf. And then above 135 pounds, you, the seller, need to decide whether or not you are going to um, be the importer of record and pay the VAT on behalf of the customer, the import VAT, right. or is the customer going to pay the import VAT? So okay. that 135 pounds is a really good threshold to keep in mind if you're importing directly um, to customers in the UK right. and not fulfilling from the UK. So I think that's a very, I think that's a bigger deal for say like drop shippers that are Absolutely. selling individual orders than uh, Amazon FBA sellers. But yeah, I mean like that's uh, that 135 pounds, I think. Is it 135? 135 pounds. Yeah. And yeah. drop shipping, you, you raised a good point because there's a lot of drop shipping uh, manufacturers in the EU. So that 135 pounds is the same coming from the EU. It doesn't matter where outside the UK, it's all just coming into the UK. For me, I think it's pretty high because I think, I'm not sure you know in Canada, that's, I think like the threshold is like so much lower. I think it's like maybe like 30 something or something. It's really, yeah, really I think low. it is I quite forgot. low. Yeah, you're right. Everything yeah, sucks. Like, it feels I, it, like nothing, <laughs> like it's going to cost nothing to like import. Like, but I feel in Canada, like they try to tax you for every single, okay, I, I might get in trouble saying this. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Hong Kong. It's yeah, okay. Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> you won't be allowed back into Canada. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't don't forget like once the COVID subside, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, um, Alex, I think um, you know my my knowledge on VAT just uh, went up like a few notches uh, <laughs> thanks to your help.
I'm so glad. I know it's not, like I said, it's not the most interesting topic, but it's one that's super important and vital. And even as a foundation of every single business, or it should be a foundation of every single business that comes into the EU. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me to discuss it. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming on. Um, so I think before we leave off, do you want to uh, talk about a little bit about uh, Simply VAT? Yeah, sure. So Simply VAT um, is it specializes in international taxes for e-commerce businesses um, specifically. So if you're trading in the UK, the EU, Canada, Australia, if you need help with your international taxes, whether you sell on your own website or on a marketplace, uh, we're here to help. We can do VAT registrations and ongoing compliance. Um, so any kind of aspect of your business, whether you're just starting out or you're scaling um, and going global, we are here to help. All right, perfect. So uh, for any Amazon sellers or e-commerce sellers that are interested in uh, maybe uh, outsourcing their uh, VAT tax needs, uh, reach out to uh, Simply VAT. Uh, I'll link the website below. Again, thanks a lot, Alex, for uh, coming on talking about uh, you know such a fun topic in VAT. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Rick. It's been great.